So, good evening, everyone. Peter Paul from Delft and Mario Lein from Amsterdam. And Leonard, Leonard, are you in New York or somewhere else? I'm in New York. Yeah, okay. And I'm in somewhere in Mediterranean Sea. And we are together uh, tonight, and I would like to start uh, with introducing myself. I'm an Amsterdam-based actor. My name is Imra Dincher, and I'm here tonight with uh, three great teachers, uh, Peter Paul Herbrons, Mario Lyon Bars, and Lenard Petit. Uh, and they will be co-leading a workshop in Amsterdam in July from 11th to 15th. Uh, and uh, we are together here like to give just a, uh, idea about what, uh, what's going to happen in the workshop and some more details. But uh, I want to ask, uh, like maybe we can go one by one. Uh, and I first want to say that like my intention, uh, my interest in this workshop is because I believe that like I know that uh, there are really good, uh, great two teachers in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, Mario Leinbars and Peter Paul Herbrands, and they are inspired by the Michael Chekhov technique and they are using uh, it in their work. But on the other hand, as an actor, I am feeling I feel like you know I need a community in the Netherlands and Michael Chico community and when I'm checking with my active friends or the the other creative artists I see that like it's not really known maybe it's not really widespread uh, in our country so uh, I think that's a great opportunity like bringing two these two teachers together and combining with uh, Michael Chico studio in New York uh, because then our petit is also coming to Amsterdam for the workshop so maybe we can start Start Mario line with you. Like, what was your intention with this workshop, and what is your in interests uh, as a creative artist and as a teacher these days? Thank you, Imra. Well, I am. Um, I know Len for a long time already. He was. He introduced me to the Chekhov technique, and um, from there, I followed him for a long time and became a partner in, in working together. And we traveled along, along the world or around the world in teaching the Chekhov technique. And um, in the beginning, there was a, an, a workshop in 1994, if I'm right, and that was in England. And that's where I met Peter Paul. And Peter Paul had started a Chekhov studio in the Netherlands, and I didn't know anything about it. So we met there, and then I became a teacher at a, a Chekhov theater studio. Len came there, and so we had this whole sort of, um, yeah, community growing for several years. And um, after we had a part time training there, and after I would say seven, seven years or something like that, Peter Paul, is that right? <laughs> I have no idea, sorry. Must be Long right. time ago. <laughs> okay, so for seven years we had this part-time actor training. And um, uh, because there was not enough interest from the Netherlands, in the Netherlands, um, we moved on and I uh, became a separate um, uh, Tiny Hero Productions and um, I st uh, moved on with uh, creating uh, workshops and um, and yeah, that's about it. And then um, I did it for, for years and years and years and worked together with several different artists all around the world and with... Um, um, yeah, how how much do you want to dive into the whole history of the Michael Chekhov around the world? But we did it for quite a long time. But it's true in Holland, uh, it, it there's a lot of people that are interested, but it's never become a community in that sense. And I think that also has to do with um, the sort of country we are. Yeah. Now, I also would like to uh, have your take, Peter Paul. Like, what do you think uh, about the Michael Checo uh, technique in the Netherlands? Also, your approach to it. I mean, what is your interest as a creative artist these days and as a teacher also? Mm -hmm. uh, well, these days, I, I may, uh, primarily use the technique in my organizational work. I'm an organizational consultant. 
And you'd be surprised how much actually we do use of the Michael Chekhov techniques and how, how important he is in making, visible, making things visible, for instance. Um, processes, what people feel, what people think, how they can create something. That all finds its roots in the Michael Chekhov technique. So <clears throat> that's why I very much connected to it. Although my theater work actually, my professional theater work already ended when I was 29. So that's, that's long ago. Um, but still been using the work a lot. Um, I know Meyer Lang from that and, and Len Boat from that. I can't, I can't remember when that was. This bit is big Michael Chekhov meeting where I know one of the Michael Chekhov famous actors didn't, didn't attend in the end. And there was always this message on the board. <laughs> well, later I found out that you were writing this messages, Len. I can't, who was this this guy who didn't turn, turn up? <laughs> Anthony, Anthony, Anthony Quinn. Quinn. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I remember. Well, and then <laughs> I've met Len on several occasions and Maya Lang, uh, both in theater work and in, in uh, corporate, uh, corporate wor work. And the last thing I'd like to say is I also do difficult areas in cities, transforming them. And we use a lot of uh, culture there, a lot of art, especially... Uh, theater and again there the Michael Chekhov technique is so incredibly useful and um, uh, direct so so I, I love it and I still do love it very much so. thank you so Leonard we will be hosting you in the Netherlands and uh, yeah I want to also have your feelings because I think maybe it's right to say that it's your first time in Amsterdam for a workshop is that correct No, no and then, no no um, very early after meeting Marlene um, she oh. invited me to come and she uh, organized uh, a number of workshops over a number of years mm -hmm. and also as she said uh, this wasn't in um, Amsterdam, but it was in uh, uh, Leiden. That's where the school was, yeah. right in Leiden. Yeah. And um, so I went yeah. there and 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 taught some some there, and you know met with uh, with Peter Paul when I was in Amsterdam, and and so maintained a friendship, and um, mm -hmm. uh, you know a colleague uh, a colleagues coming together kind of thing, and um, and so uh, when Marlene asked to do this. Um, to organize if I was be interested and it's like yes this would be great to come back to um, Amsterdam it's been a long time actually because mm -hmm. uh, since be going to Amsterdam this was maybe the first kind of foray for me into uh, Europe and um, and then I met a lot of people and uh, got invitations pretty much in every country uh, mm -hmm. in the last 15 20 years um, in, in Europe. So I've been to Europe quite a lot and then didn't go for a while because of COVID and um, been a bit terrified actually of getting on a plane and still am. So, you know, I'm, I'm going with a bit of t tension in my body just, just so that I can get there safely. And well. um, I, I, Mar Marlene said there is no COVID there. So I don't have to worry about that now. Yeah. I mean, I still, I, I, I haven't been teaching in, 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 in the presence of people Mm -hmm. um for two years uh, i've been um teaching online on in this this forum zoom and mm -hmm. um i like it it's it's uh enjoyable we've met there on zoom you and i and um uh but i so i have i have a lot of apprehension about coming and being face to face with people again you know and mm -hmm. people who want something so um i'm very uh, excited actually about coming same here, like we are also very excited. I remember the first time I came to the Zoom workshops and I was telling you that I, I want to know, I want to know what it really is. You know, I want to put everything in my order, uh, in order in my mind. And you told me like, like maybe it's time to forget about your mind and, you know, like go through <laughs> your body and your senses. So it will be interesting because also in Netherlands, I think we have a mind oriented culture, right? So this workshop, I think, will give a complete different window to the actors and also creative people in Amsterdam. Yes, I'm sure it will. 
<laughs> I can't. I, I can't say anything really about the, the culture or the actors or the artists in in in, uh, in the Netherlands or, or where they are within themselves, uh, yeah. whether they you know relate to the world through their heads or not. I don't know. I just know um, what I know. I can, I can. I might be able to give a little uh, um, example. I just got a WhatsApp from uh, one of the people that I've worked with in the theater and with the clown. And we do a lot of practical work. So if there's a question, we research it immediately on the floor and we go and do it. And she said, I was just giving money by the government to do a training. And it was a very fancy training and all of that. And then she said, but we had to sit there all day. And all I could think is, oh, I want to go to my Alliance clown class because we research it on the floor. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, that is such a, a great sort of, um, it's not for me that it's for me, but it's it's the difference in what what we do is we research stuff through doing it and, and being active and sharing and and it's and I thought, wow, that's a great example, actually, for uh, what we mm -hmm. want to talk about and what we can expect, yeah. or not. So, would the government sponsor a, a, a more physical oriented thing, or the, the <laughs> I don't know. No, do I said to her, <laughs> I understand. I understand what you're saying, and um, shall we have a brainstorm to see how we can bring this more <laughs> in practice? Actually, that's what I asked her. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, we'll oh, see. That, that's that, that's exactly what what we are talking about here right, in this workshop. And I'd like to 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 give you a quote of one of our my my Czech friends who lives in Munich. And he says, uh, um, "The mind is intelligent, but the body is wise." And that sort of makes it makes it very helpful. So we need our intelligence, sure, but we need more than that. We need also need wisdom. And that only comes about when we start moving and doing and expressing ourselves. And that doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter if it's a board or if it's on the street here. We really start communicating when we start to express ourselves as a whole human being, not just like we are doing now. <laughs> There's also a particular part of it, yeah? giving information, but it's no, it's not it's not the whole experience which leads into activity, action, future. And it's also about not making notes on papers, I guess, because that's what I heard uh, from you also, Lenart, that uh, if, if we, it's not about the notes and you know what you write on paper, but it's more about your nervous system or your senses or your imagination, you know, like like what you register in your uh, inner system and then it comes up when you need it. So I find it very special and also very surprising and magical part of it, I, I believe. Well, well, you know, I, I, that idea about uh, please stay away from taking notes was um, comes to from my, one of my teachers who was a student of Chekhov and that's how it mm -hmm. was uh, for her when mm -hmm. she was studying with him they were not allowed to to write down stuff in, in their notebooks during the class he said she said uh he he gave us a long lunch so we could lunch together and talk about these things together and go over them again in another kind of way uh, which was the way that would that which was the thing that would be engaged if you stepped out and took a note you're engaging another part of yourself another part of your being and he said, save it for lunch, you know, when, <laughs> when yeah. you're, when you, then you can meet and do that as a group. And in that period, you can write things down. And, and yeah, it's a sort of double di to... digesting. You know, then... Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> not, not double digesting, exactly. Yeah. And then go back to work in the afternoon and leave your notebooks alone, you know, and, and let yeah. this, let this be the notebook because yeah, yeah. yeah the body is, is wise, but the body is also um, remembers everything. doesn't forget. Yeah simply doesn't forget if you have an experience that registers somehow in the body then it will be remembered for the rest of your life mm -hmm. but uh, it's almost sounds like ritualistic but uh, i 
also remembered that like there are really like short tricks that you gave us, especially in sense and perception uh, you can use in the auditions. You know, there are also practical things that an actor can use, you know, like you, you practice it two, three times and then it's already registered in the system and it works quite well <laughs> when it's required. Yeah, I've been working with a, um, uh, a scientist for the past few months. And uh, I'm, in fact, I, I had a session with him today and we were talking about these very things and I started calling them instruments uh, mm -hmm. and to, for him to look at them as instruments the way he uses instruments in this laboratory. <clears throat> you know, that the, these are the, the tools of the, of the instruments that, 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 that we're using here. Good. It's interesting to turn this, yep. the scientist, to try to turn the scientist into a mm -hmm. performer. Uh, because we're doing a performance <laughs> and um and he's going to be on stage for the entire thing but he's never had this um never done such a thing as this he's lectured and whatever and is very good at giving information but um how that information comes out of him is is um is not so alive and with these instruments that we're employing mm -hmm. these instruments there's a life that comes to it mm -hmm. Yeah, there are like in the classes, in the workshops, there were many people like from different backgrounds, but like I keep uh, hearing the same words, you know, discovery, like uh, freedom to create with and like not doing it right, like don't do it right, but just do it. And then people like we were like people uh, while doing it, we're learning a lot, actually. Uh, so I also find it really very interesting. But how did you come up, Marjolein, to with this idea of this workshop? Like, what what's special about you cooperating, uh, like bringing in three teachers mm -hmm. together? Well, I you know these two men <laughs> have been uh, 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 not. It's not Len. Both Len and Peter Paul have been at the root of uh, my development of what I've been searching for in my life. And um, and I've always um, felt that, like Peter Paul has done a ton of research in, in um, finding the bridge between, I would almost say daily life, the, 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 all the art or the life as an art. And, and really connecting all of that in, in, in a way that is to me truly artistic and that is really human. And Len has been, uh, you know, my, my Chekhov master and my, uh, uh, yeah, all, all in all what I've learned in the Chekhov te technique, I learned from Len and, and I can see how both of those approaches can bridge and, um, and that has been living in me very strongly always. I've been both an artist as being very interested in the social realms, using arts in um, in an in a research way. So if Len is talking about um, giving uh, the scientists instruments. I'm also thinking about how in a daily life we can use the technique as instruments to get information, to express ourselves. And I know a lot of artists feel that um, that, that is amateur. And I, I actually think that it's a high social skill and a high social creative skill. It's creativity in daily life it's it's almost you cannot practice it um or you cannot rehearse it like we do on the stage you have to be here so fully present so fully there use all the information and make it into an artistic an an life full of life full of love um yeah every minute action i would say so it's creating in its almost, um, uh, yeah, almost purest form, or I, I, these are not the right words, but it's in that direction where I feel um, that it's great that we want to, that, uh, that we're a good group of three, and also, um, um, yeah, there was something else, but I'll come back to that later. Mm -hmm. 
maybe we can also use the word surrender, huh? That like you allow the technique work for itself, but just not don't think too much or don't try to look beautiful or like ch charming, <laughs> but just do it. So because like I, I believe the phrase is acting is doing it, just acting is doing and just do it and see what happens. But Peter Paul, you also said that like uh, you are not into theater since 29. Uh, but uh, which other uh, fields, like you mentioned, but maybe I want some details, you know, which other fields you use the technique? Wow. And... Personal details are not very interesting, actually. But well, I'll, t I'll tell you an example. Uh, we do a, a workshop in, in, in companies now that's called Connecting to the Future. Mm -hmm. And 50% of this workshop contains of movement. And the other 50 is, is talking about the results of that movement. So even connecting to the future, if you do it from sitting down from what you already know, it's actually connecting to the past because you already know it. So to get people to step out of that and step into the unknown, the uncertain, the things I cannot talk about, the, the fear I have for what will happen if I do that, only if we take steps into that area, that field, mm -hmm. that, that then we can find things of the future that weren't there before. But talking about it won't help uh, at the moment. We have to move, we have to move around. We do scenes, we do exercises, we do everything to get people in that state of where they gather enough courage to step into those moments of the unknown and then come back and then we can use our intelligence and make sense of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe even make a plan of it, uh, that doesn't matter. But the first ideas, the first impulses, the first grasps of the future, future come, from, come from movement itself, come through the movement. Um, not just moving, but there is an idea behind the movement. What do we actually do here? Mm -hmm. uh, so taking that step away from what you already know, we use a lot of Chekhov techniques, some Bodhma gymnastics as well, but most of the most Chekhov techniques to get people there. But also the, the, the founding principles, because if you're not used to moving around as a board, you first have to create a feeling of ease, of course, mm -hmm. uh, an atmosphere in which we dare to move and to express. Mm -hmm. And we take the step into the feeling of form, uh, where we it's more like almost sculpting, find the right form in which we do it. And then there is the element of, is it truthful? Is it beautiful? And only then we start to see, ah, this is, this is pointing towards a whole different area that we want to, um, that we want to research uh, for our organization, for our company, for our uh, area where we live in. So I would like to emphasize again, uh, this, this, this movement as the way forward into the future is enormously important. And most organization I, I have worked with, even when I come in, they sit, they sit around tables, they sit behind their desks, they sit all the time, which is an enormous uh, obstacle for the future. It's not an obstacle for maintaining in the now and bringing, we, 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 we do in the past and even for innovation, it's fine. But for a whole new idea, we need to move and we need to learn to understand what kind of, exp what, what, what wants to express itself through us uh, when we are doing something. So is that an answer to your question? I don't think so, but it's actually something I wanted to say. Well, no, actually, I, I, I'd very like to helpful. Say something. I'd like sure. to say something about that. Um, I've recently been been uh, teaching uh, um, a lot of uh, a course courses on the psychological gesture, which is a piece of the Chekhov technique. It's the most probably most well known title of some piece of of the Chekhov technique, and um, when people are come to this in the beginning, it's quite elusive and difficult and mysterious about what it is and, and how to do it. And I've been teaching lately that um, we can stumble, stumble upon these, these gestures in an easy way by just finding ourselves in movement, by moving 
like um, finding the movement of a wave, a, 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 an ocean wave that crashes on the beach and goes back up, right? And so you know, get the body to move like this, just move like this, right? And then we have what we're working on, what we're looking for kind of all around here, all around here, and what my, my Ch Michael Chekhov calls like the higher intellect, the monologue or the play of the character or whatever is all just sort of living right here. And then through moving in this way, we just discover these gestures which come out of nowhere. They were unknown a moment ago and all of a sudden boom, they arrive and we then we're forced to examine them and see what they are, which, uh, which they were unknown before and they are about the future. They are about my future work. And they seem very often to be ex exactly what the mm. actor is looking for um, in, 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 the, in the search that would have been just a, you know, could have been just to sit down and think about it and try to figure out, well, is, what does the gesture look like? And they're kind of like just fumbling and stumbling in a very um, abstract and, and mental way. But just to get into this repetitive movement, these things appear um, and uh, they're discovered. And this creates a kind of charge in, in the person who receives these things. And so these things are potent and they came from movement. They came from movement. They did not come from sitting down, thinking about what you need to find. Yeah. And also, I think what is great if you do it that way is, you know, if it's right or wrong, you know, when it's there. So there is an, an, um, yeah, you were talking about wisdom of the of the body, and there is something inside of me that knows or recognizes something as as truthful, as right, as. But you, I got to move in order to do to do it to discover it. But there is so much more in that unknown that is known. <laughs> but it's it's not because I know it here, but it is because something in me knows that it's there or that it's that is it yeah it's very fake but at the same time you got to do it and, and then it appears it, in, in yeah and a, it appears and then body. it isn't fake no but it isn't fake it's 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 something you when you move with a certain intention something will appear will connect to you that's why yeah. we call it connecting to the future and then to from this recognition comes an idea it's actually a dialogue, you could say, uh, in which I'm trying, which I try to give shape, yeah? and it's it, it's fun to do it as a group as well. So it's not just an individual exercise; it's it's what you can do as a team, as a group, as well. Uh, but it, it's so interesting what you said, Peter Paul, really about the uh, sitting around talking about the future only with the things that we know. You can only just deal with the past. That that's, that's only that, that's that the produces that's only the, the past. Even your intention is to move forward. It's, that's, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I want to come. Sorry. Sorry. I I also find it very valuable what you said because uh, I think this workshop is not only for the actors. Uh, like it's really serves for uh, to many people in creative business or just want to be creative in in their jobs. Can I say that, Mario Line? Because it's not. I know that Leonard, you're also working with singers, not only actors, but like many people from creative field. So it can like any. Many people from uh, creativity, uh, they can find, you know, pieces and bits that can work really well for themselves in their jobs also. Mm -hmm. Can I, is it fair to say that? Yeah, I would say so. It's, I think it, 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 you know, you connect to the creative individuality in everybody. So we all have it, <laughs> but we are not used to call it that. And sometimes you feel, oh, yeah, but that is not so creative or that is not an artist. But again, um, yeah, there is artistry. Is that a word, Len? Artistry in, yes, in yes. yeah, in everything. And, um, and, and there is such clarity in, in working this way and such, yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know, we 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 come from this this uh, source of of Michael Chekhov, and you know, one thing that I remember reading from Michael Chekhov is that uh, when you're practicing things, uh, especially as a student, that you must do everything like it's a little piece of art. If you're asked to lift your arm as part of an exercise, which doesn't sound like anything but lifting your arm, 
but to bring your aesthetic, creative, artistic self to this action of lifting your arm, even though that's not the intention of the exercise, that's about something else, but to make that a little piece of art is a, a kind of consciousness that's very sparkly, very, yeah. very sparkly. Beautiful. Actually, that you that that you that you, you that's that's how you train your instruments. Huh? If I may uh, call that an instrument as well. Huh? So you, by so it's it's n n there is no gesture that doesn't have a meaning, mm -hmm. yeah? and and you can also bring a meaning to it. So um, it's it's important that we that we start try of that we try to understand that. I, I like uh, uh, what I like about the workshop we are going to do is the fact that it's that the title is uh, expect the unexpected so we 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 don't go there with a full plan we 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 go and work there together and i also like that we go to work that the three teachers if that's possible with the amount of people i have no idea are working together we are, we we are there in the same room with the people so it's not a classical form that we, that we that mostly those workshops are about so it's it's our own unexpectedness is also in there right? which i think gives it an extra um, invitation for me okay but we do we, we we will have an overview we will have a a, a large picture without without sure. a specific without a specific you know, moment to moment plan, but we, uh, we have intentions obviously, yeah. and it is to work with more than actors. Um, but that's pretty much my world. I work with performers almost entirely. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, um, but I have worked with, with other creative type people, but this stuff, this stuff of Chekhov is, uh, and he even says that it, it's the language. It's a language for artists. All of these things become a language to that, that you speak to yourself or you speak with your colleagues. Um, and it's very um, inspiring, all the time inspiring to lead you to creation because it is, it is our artistic language about how we speak. So we can speak to musicians and speak to actors and speak to poets and the same, the same words. And they, they resonate in their own specific way to each of those disciplines, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do work with musicians at the moment a lot, and it's it's wonderful to see how how the language actually is so close to what they are used to in their own profession. But then to become the instrument yourself is what is so different, and and I think to to make these distinctions and to also find these comparisons comparisons uh, comparisons uh, are uh, are wonderful and um but it strikes me over and over again that it is uh, especially is such a human language a universal artistic human creative language and every artist yeah every artist understands it yeah you say I, that again? I like universal, that creative, artistic. <laughs> what else? Human. <laughs> Human. Ah, that one should be in the front. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I was about to say, I, I really like the childish joy part of it. You know, this it really gives you the joy of playing. And because like you don't know it, like you just apply this something and then you concentrate and figure out what's happening in your body. And then something pops up and it's like, you know, you surprised yourself. And that's, you know, that reaction, I always love it. So yeah. it's always, oh, so the unexpected okay. part of the workshop True. is mesmerizing me, I have to say. True, but it's also uh, mastery. Yeah? And I leave Can you elaborate? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, and then there is this intelligence. <laughs> I would say, come to the workshop. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Now, it's not. Of course, there is this this joyful playing, childish playing element, but I'm we also talking about the play of of professionals, huh? whether they are uh, uh, directors of companies or, or musicians or. 
uh, it needs a discipline to get to a certain mm -hmm. level of understanding these impulses. It, it needs practice. Yeah? So if we do these workshops in companies, we do several with weeks in between and people have to practice to get better at understanding what it is. Uh, so it's not just playing and having fun, that, that's part of it, but it also goes to stages where it's not fun, where we get information of where it's stuck, where it's difficult, where we have to work through, find our way into. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. It's not just only having fun, it's also to get into the, un the, the unknown. Sometimes you feel, okay, this is a terrible emotion I'm, I'm getting here, or this, this the relationship with this person I have to work with is not so, it's still material of what you're trying to do. But still, you have to see, how can I work with this? What does it tell me? Uh, so it's not just pure enjoyment in the sense of that it is not work. No, there's a lot of hard work to find some, some, some I would say, the, the discipline to, to uh, see that all the impulses that are there, uh, there are no good or bad, huh? there are just impulses. And we have to work through them to understand what, what their message is. Uh, what their creative message is actually, um, but maybe I, I, maybe I'm too serious here. But that's that's how I perceive it because it always starts nice in these workshops we do. We have fun, and then <laughs> the difficult problems come up, and then of course, yeah, now it's work, people. It's not just having fun. It's it's using the things we've learned in a more elaborate situation, and that means uh, helping each other. Uh, observations, sensations, expressions, we need to take them very literally and, and see what they're trying to tell us. Aho. Hmm? <laughs> That's what, what today the Americans say if they agree. Aho. Aho. <laughs> yeah, aho. Yeah. Now what you bring to, to the, uh, the table is, and that is something I, I really uh, appreciate is that everything is information to work with. Everything, whatever we're doing, it's information to work with and to create something new with. So that, that is the part where it's true. And to also not, you know, if you want to work as an ensemble, and I think that is also a great thing about how we, we're going to work. We're going to work as one big ensemble for a week. And of course, um, yeah, and that is that is um, a challenge because, of course, I can at a certain moment think like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore or I don't like it. So, but that is information. I can take this very personal or I can say, okay, I don't like this. What, what is the information? What is the gesture? What is the? Can we find ease in this? Uh, how can we turn it around? Or how can we work through it? And and that's, yeah, and it's in different words, but that's what you're saying as well. Yeah. Yeah, but also children play are like this, huh, Peter Paul? Like they really concentrate when children are playing. They really mm -hmm. focus. So, I mean, like fun they have is not about just like doing this lousy things, but really concentrating and yeah. doing the things they want sure. to do. So it, it has seriousness in it. It has a language, yeah. special language, like science maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, like, that's what well do you said. think, Leonard? Play is serious business, you know. Play is serious business. <laughs> it is. I mean, professional athletes, they're playing, right? Mm. They're very serious. Yeah. They're that's, very that's, good. that's very good, Leonard. Yeah. yeah. To, to stay honest, for instance, is very difficult yeah. throughout the creative process. It's and, from and actually from Netherlands, huh? Johan Huizinga, uh, who found the concept of homo ludens, the human beings who, who have the function of playing. It's like he mentioned, you know, like the one of the basic things that uh, makes different uh, difference from a hum human being is uh, that they, they can play. They can establish a play and seriously be evolve in it, like be in it. Nice. Sure. 
So there, I think there are a few spots left in the workshop. So um, who, like, who would you like to see, Marjolein, <laughs> in the team? Well, mostly <laughs> people that are really uh, want to come. You know, you really uh, that are attracted by this. That um, um, where, that it speaks to you. That's mostly it. And uh, I can, of course, narrow it down. But in the end, I I would really like people to come because this speaks to them and they think I got to be there and you have to be there. So and be welcome. So would you like to add anything else or shall we keep the unexpected part uh, a little bit open? <laughs> so <laughs> not give many information. There's there is some information on a. Uh, uh, flyer of some sort of a poster there's some information mm -hmm. about the process and, that we're going to be working yeah. on. and people can always contact us to want to know more and who shall who can they register my line they can re, uh, register through um uh how do you say that www dot <laughs> tiny hero dot nl and then you will find a page which says expect the unexpected um, it's actually also on Peter Paul's website, which is www.act2b.com. Is that right? Or NL? Dot com. Dot com. And then there is, of course, also on Leonard's website. But that is too long. You can better spell it's that. www.michaelchekoffactingstudio.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also there, which will, it will there. only direct you to www.tinyhero.nl <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah always in the end you always, actually you always come to me it. so that's <laughs> okay. but also okay. people can follow in instagram uh, michael checo studio yeah. new york yeah. it's checo yeah. studio in yes Michael's. i've been seeing you there quite a lot these days <laughs> yeah me me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah great okay thank you very much people yes thank yeah. you all yeah, I'm looking so forward to being with you all. And uh, you'll be there too, so that's fantastic. We're going to have um, some play. Okay. Perfect. Thank so, you, Imra, for uh, having this conversation with us. Thank you all, and see you all in Amsterdam. Huh? <laughs>